かっておらぬのじゃ前に聞いたの So, Shogun is almost halfway through its 10 episode run, and all our key players are now in place, waiting for the war to commence. The tension is escalating with every scene as Lord Toronaga prepares reluctantly for the upcoming Crimson Sky conflict and a full scale war against Ishido Kazunare. Meanwhile, Ishido maneuvers to elect a new member of the Council of Regents with the goal of impeaching and executing Toronaga. But, in the last two episodes, a new fascinating character has emerged with the potential to be the main villain amidst all the power struggles. Already happening. We are indeed talking about Lady Ochiba Nokata, the mother of the late Taiko's young heir. She was initially an Ito, kept as a hostage in disguise of a respected guest or hostage in order to ensure Toranaga's safety in the Osaka castle. Now, back in Osaka, Ochiba is all fired up and prepared to lead the campaign against Toranaga. The recently released episode earlier this week completely focused on her determination and readiness for conflict. Now, like every other main character in the show, Lady Ochiba's character also takes its historical. Reference from a real life woman of influence in the Sengoku period of Japan. So, without wasting another second, let's discuss the life of the most controversial woman from the Sengoku period. Before we get into our explanation, though, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> The Early Life of Lady Cha Cha. Before she became Yodo Dono or Yodo Gimi, she was born in 1569 as Azai Cha Cha. Lady Cha Cha was a high ranking priestess of sorts, even back in the turbulent Sengoku period. Now, Cha Cha was born as the eldest daughter to Azai Nagamasa and Oichi. Her father was a very powerful daimyo, along with being the head of the Azai clan, while her mother was actually the youngest sister of Oda Nobunaga, the tyrannical shogun who was the first great unifier of Japan and the inspiration behind Kuroda Sama's character in the Shogun miniseries. Lady Cha Cha's entire life was deeply intertwined with powerful warlords and the intricate political landscape of Japan's Sengoku period, marked by constant civil wars and social turmoil. Her family's fortunes were in constant flux as she faced the unwielding waves of war, betrayal, and ultimately a destiny fully shaped by other Others' ambitions. Despite this, she began to navigate the political game for her own ambitions and desires, earning a place in history as the most beautiful yet wicked woman of Japan. Lady Cha Cha was the oldest of three sisters, Ohatsu and Oeo, who would also not be spared from the intriguing life of ups and downs due to the political instability of the Sengoku period. During this time, the Azai clan held a strong position in feudal Japan due to their ties with the influential Oda clan. However, their fortunes were about to change drastically. When Lady Cha Cha was just one year old, her uncle, Oda Nobunaga, initiated a war against the Asakura family, besieging one of their castles. This caused Cha Cha's father, Azai Nagamasa, to face a difficult decision as the Asakura and Azai clans had been allies for generations. This sudden conflict divided the entire clan, with many samurais wanting to uphold the old alliance with the Asakura. But regardless of everything, Nagamasa chose initially to remain neutral, which indirectly implied that he was favoring Nobunaga's side. However, he eventually decided to honor the long standing alliance with the Asakura, breaking ties with the Oda clan. This decision led to the siege of Odani Castle in 1573, when Cha Cha was around four years old. Despite the Asakura clan sending reinforcements, Nobunaga swiftly took down the relief force, killing their commander, Saito Tatsuoki. On the other hand, the Asakura clan's head, Yoshikage, was also betrayed by one of his men and was hence forced to commit ritual suicide or seppuku. This turn of events left the Azai clan in disarray as Nagamasa. Nagamasa now stood alone. Facing overwhelming odds, Nagamasa chose to commit seppuku rather than surrendering to Nobunaga. However, Nobunaga demanded the safe return of his sister, Oichi, so Cha Cha, accompanied by her mother and two sisters, departed the castle. Although Odani Castle eventually fell, Oichi and her three daughters were now under Nobunaga's care, after Nagamasa's death. Although Nobunaga warmly welcomed his sister and nieces, he soon discovered that Oichi had an infant son named Manpukumaru, who was Nagamasa's male heir. He cunningly persuaded Oichi to reveal the boy's whereabouts, claiming he wanted to ensure his safety and upbringing. However, Nobunaga had the boy executed to extinguish the Azai clan's lineage completely. This cruel act left a deep impact on Cha Cha, who witnessed her uncle's ruthless actions and the ultimate destruction of her father's clan, experiencing firsthand the harsh realities of feudal Japan that shaped her character for years to come. Later, Oichi remarried a famous Japanese samurai commander named Shibata Katsui. Japan's most powerful daimyo, Oda Nobunaga, 
met his end in the Honoji incident after being assassinated by his most trusted general, Akechi Mitsuhide. Even though Nobunaga's eldest son and heir, Oda Nobutada, tried to flee, he was also tragically murdered, thus leaving the Oda clan in complete disarray. Now, I want to point out something here. Shogun's Lady Ochiba certainly parallels Lady Chacha's life, but in no way are they the same. Kuroda-sama was shown to be Lady Ochiba's father, but in real life, the Oda Nobunaga who inspired Kuroda's character was actually Lady Chacha's uncle not her father. Similarly, Akechi Mitsuhide, who inspired Mariko's father, Akechi Jinsai's character, killed Oda Nobunaga's Kuroda-sama, disrupting the Oda clan, the ripple effect of which was faced by Lady Cha-Cha. Given that the relations are not directly intertwined, it's pretty obvious that the layered family dynamics in Shogun were added to give Ochiba's character that much-needed personal touch to fuel her vengeance against Toranaga. How did Lady Chacha rise to power as Yodo Dono? So, Oda Nobunaga's sudden death threw the Oda clan into complete chaos, sparking a heated struggle for succession among his second and third eldest sons, Nobukatsu and Nobutaka. Meanwhile, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a loyal ally and general of the late Nobunaga, took swift action by calling a council to address the crisis at hand. Surprisingly, the council declared Nobunaga's youngest son, Oda Hidenobu, who was only three years old, the rightful heir. Plus, Hideyoshi's recent victory over Nobunaga's murderer, Akechi Mitsuhide, at the Battle of Yamazaki, further solidified his influence and ambitions against other generals. So, he used the succession crisis to assert his power, aiming to govern until Hidenobu came of age. However, not everyone within the Oda clan supported Hideyoshi's bid for control, leading to many internal divisions and challenges within the clan's ranks. Now, Shibata Katsui, another trusted general of the late Nobunaga and Lady Chacha's stepfather, allied himself with Oda Nobutaka and Takigawa Kazumasu, challenging Hideyoshi's authority. In 1583, Katsui sent his nephew Sakuma Morimasa to lead an offensive force against Justo Takayama Ukon, who was a loyalist to Hideyoshi. Despite Katsui's strict orders to retreat, Morimasa disobeyed him and naturally was defeated, resulting in his capture and execution. This incident further triggered the Battle of Shizugatake, where Hideyoshi's forces pushed back against Sakuma's army to a castle which fell after a three-day siege. With no other option left, Katsui urged his wife, Oichi, to flee with their daughters for safety, but Oichi chose to stay by his side, facing their fate together while ensuring her daughter's escape. In a final act of honor, Katsui set his castle ablaze before performing seppuku to end his life with dignity, and Oichi refused to leave, dying alongside her husband in the flames. Before her death, Oichi entrusted her three daughters to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, unsure of their future. So, both Lady Chacha's parents had now perished due to the ongoing war in Japan, again changing the course of her life. Around the age of 13, she she entered Hideyoshi's court, becoming the highest-ranking princess of the remaining Azai family. As the eldest, she grew up during Hideyoshi's rise to power as he unified Japan, following in the footsteps of his late lord, Oda Nobunaga. During this time, Lady Chacha blossomed into a beautiful woman, resembling her late mother. She excelled in waka poetry and showed a keen interest in politics and administration. Chacha was known for her kindness, as she treated her sisters and relatives very well. She is also said to be famous for her passionate speeches about the future of the Toyotomi clan. Although Hideyoshi was supposed to take care of her like a father, he made Chacha one of his concubines, as his wife Nene was unable to conceive him an heir. In 1588, Chacha became pregnant, bringing much joy to Hideyoshi, who eagerly awaited the birth of their first son, Suromatsu. In celebration, Hideyoshi's brother, Toyotome Hidenaga, renovated Yodo Castle and gifted it to Lady Chacha. This is how she came to be known as Yododono, or Yodo no Kata, which directly translates to the lady from Yodo Castle. However, Suromatsu passed away at a very young age, leading Hideyoshi to appoint his nephew, Toyotomi Higetsugu, as an heir. But in 1593, Yodo Dono gave birth to another son, Hideyori, solidifying her position as Hideyoshi's highest ranking concubine and inheriting all privileges enjoyed by a king's wife. Meanwhile, Hideyoshi, as the second unifier of Japan, continued Nobunaga's quest to unify Japan and become its de facto ruler. Acquiring the title Shogun, he also launched the Imjin War, a massive Japanese naval invasion of Korea with over 300,000 Japanese soldiers, marking a peak in Hideyoshi's power. During this era, Yododono enjoyed immense wealth, prestige, and influence as one of Japan's most influential women, especially as the mother of Hideyoshi's heir. However, soon tensions arose between Hideyoshi and Higetsugu, leading to the latter being accused of plotting a coup in 1595. Higetsugu was condemned and had to commit seppuku. In a controversial move, Hideyoshi then ordered the execution of Higetsugu's entire family, including his innocent children, wives, and mistresses. This extreme action resulted in the tragic death 
deaths of 39 women and children, shocking the entire Japanese society and leading to the alienation of many daimyo from Toyotomi rule. One particularly crude act of Hideyoshi was his refusal to spare the life of Mogami Yoshiaki's 15-year-old daughter, who had just traveled to Kyoto with the intention of becoming Hidetsugu's concubine, but never even met him and was still executed. Despite these grim events, Yododono continued to enjoy her power as the mother of the Toyotomi clan's heir, whom she believed would one day rule Japan. Her residence at the beautiful Fushimi Castle provided her with a life of luxury and prestige, all under the protection of Hideyoshi. This peace didn't last long when tragedy struck when Toyotomi Hideyoshi fell ill and passed away in 1598. At the time of his death, his son Toyotomi Hideyori was only five years old. So, to ensure Hideyori's succession, Hideyoshi established a council of five elders, just like the Taiko had established his council of five regents before his passing. But still, the downfall of Hideyoshi led to a decline in the Toyotomi clan's power and significance. Following Hideyoshi's death, Yododono honored her parents, Azai, Nagamasa, and Oichi, by founding the Yojin, a temple dedicated to their memory. She also chose to become a Buddhist nun and supported the restoration of temples on Koya San Mountain among many others. But Hideyoshi's actions, including the elimination of his own family members before his passing, had significant repercussions, causing the clan to reap what their shogun sowed. This caused Yododono to move into Osaka Castle with her son Hideyori, and strategize to revive the Toyotomi clan's influence. Acting as Hideyori's guardian, Yododono began taking an active role in politics and effectively became the leader of Osaka Castle, guiding the clan's efforts towards restoration. Lady Yododono's Rift with Tokugawa Ieyasu So, with the absence of a prominent male leader, a major power vacuum emerged in Japan, and Tokugawa Ieyasu, being the opportunist he was, chose to grab it all. Of course, Yododono was the puppet master, dominating the political affairs as the mother of the Paramount. As the Tokugawa clan was extending their army, allying with clans who were not particularly fond with the Toyotomi regime, the tensions within the Council of Elders grew increasingly serious and unmanageable. With no clear regent in place, Ishida Mitsunari, the real-life inspiration for Lord Ishido and Shogun, and a loyal administrator of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, joined forces with Otani Yoshitsugu, who was known for his leadership despite his physical challenges. Mitsunari also recruited Masuda Nagamori, a former diplomatic counterpart from the Korean War, and Anko Kuji Eke, a monk and descendant of the Takeda clan. This alliance further extended an invitation to the leader of the Mori clan, Mori Terumoto, urging him to join their cause and thus forming the famous Western Army. Meanwhile, many daimyo rallied to Tokugawa Ayasu, who was unopposed in seniority, rank, and reputation. After knowing Ishida's plans, Tokugawa formed his Eastern Army. In 1600, the Western Army, led by Mori Terumoto, entered Yododono's residence at Osaka Castle, and despite being aware of their plans, Yododono chose not to actively engage in the conflict, thus remaining focused in safeguarding the Toyotomi family's interests. After the decisive Battle of Sekigahara, where Iyasu defeated Ishida Mitsunari and his allies, he sent a messenger to Osaka Castle, acknowledging Yododono and Hideyori's neutrality. Left with no choice but to fold, Yodo expressed her gratitude. After Mori Terumoto's withdrawal from Osaka Castle, Iyasu personally visited Osaka Castle, and during their interaction, Yodo graciously offered Iyasu a sake cup but insisted he pass it to Hideyori, thus publicly declaring Iyasu as Hideyori's surrogate father. Now, Although Yododono did not actively participate in the Battle of Sekigahara, over 2,000 Toyotomi vassals did, leading to the strained relations between the Tokugawa and Toyotomi factions. As a consequence, Iyasu rewarded many Toyotomi territories to his allies, reducing the Toyotomi clan's control significantly. Following this, when Yododono confronted Tokugawa Iyasu, who was establishing a military government in Edo, Iyasu simply refused to acknowledge vassalage to Hideyori, Hideyoshi's heir. Winning the Battle of Sekigahara in gaining renown as a skilled warrior and strategist, Iyasu swiftly became Japan's most powerful daimyo, taking Hideyoshi's place. And as Iyasu's power grew, Yododono's depression deepened. By 1601, she began suffering from chest pains, eating disorders, and headaches. Her situation only worsened when the Emperor of Japan, Go Yose, appointed Iyasu as Shogun of Japan in 1604. So, at 60 years old, Iyasu had outlived many great leaders like Oda Nobunaga and Toyotome Hideyoshi. Plus, as Shogun, Iyasu focused on solidifying the Tokugawa Shogunate, dismantling the ambitions of remaining powerful samurai clans. Despite marrying his granddaughter, Princess Senhime, to Toyotome Hideyori, tensions persisted assisted between the Tokugawa and Toyotomi families. Meanwhile, the former retainers of Hideyori slowly shifted their allegiance to Iyasu, weakening
Shin Hideyori and Yorodono's position, despite their control over Osaka Castle and their inherited wealth from Hideyoshi. On May 8, 1605, Yasu requested Hideyori show his loyalty to the Tokugawa clan by paying homage. However, Yorodono declined the invitation due to the territorial losses and the decrease in status she suffered. In 1611, at 17 years old, Hideyori finally left Osaka Castle to meet with Yasu at Nijo Castle for a two-hour meeting. Now, Hideyori's personal guardian, Karagiri Katsumoto, had spread rumors portraying Hideyori as inept and stupid. Unlike his father, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, in order to deter aggression against the rising heir of the Toyotomi clan. However, during the meeting, Tokugawa Iyasu found Hideyori to be impressive and was surprised by his conduct and intellect. Soon, tensions between the Tokugawa and Toyotomi clans escalated as the Toyotomi started gathering support from the Ronin Samurais and other opponents of the Tokugawa shogunate in Osaka, asserting Hideyori's rightful claim to rule Japan. Now, even after passing the title of shogun to his son Tokugawa Hidetada in 1605, Iyasu retained significant influence. But the breaking point in the feud between the Tokugawa and Toyotomi families came with the Hokoji Bell Incident. So, in 1614, the Toyotomi clan rebuilt the castle and funded the construction of the Hokoji Temple in Kyoto, which included a magnificent bronze bell inscribed with messages interpreted by Iyasu as indicating the Toyotomi's intent to rise again against the shogunate. This was perceived as treachery, leading Iyasu to order Hideyori to leave Osaka Castle but the castle's occupants refused. Katsumoto then suggested sending Yorodona to Ido as a hostage in order to prevent any conflict, but she outright refused the request. Suspecting Katsumoto's loyalty, Yorodono eventually banished him and the other servants, accusing them of treason, before they allied with the Tokugawa clan, ending any chance of the Toyotomi's reconciliation with the shogunate and thus initiating the siege of Osaka. Lady Yorodono's Tragic End now, our silent strategist Tokugawa Iyasu, who practically stole his power and control from Hideyori following Toyotomi Hideyoshi's death, saw Hideyori as a hindrance to his efforts to unify Japan. So, in 1614, Iyasu initiated a siege on Osaka Castle. By ordering his forces to unleash controlled cannon fire on the fortress, and over the next three days, his troops bombarded the stronghold. However, realizing that the castle defenses were stronger than they assumed, and that the Toyotomi captains could not be bribed, Iyasu changed his tactics. He then directed his men to intentionally target Yorodono's quarters with cannon fire, which resulted in the death of two of her maids. Terrified by the bombardment, Yorodono chose to negotiate with Iyasu, putting a hold on the siege. On January 22nd, a solemn oath was given by Hideyori and Yorodono, pledging not to rebel against Iyasu or Hidetada. Despite this oath, in April 1615, Iyasu found out that Toyotomi Hideyori was amassing more troops and initiating attacks on the shogun's forces. Thus, the Tokugawa clan severed the truce and, during the Battle of Kashi, Hideyori's samurai general Ban Naoyuki clashed with Asano Nagakira, a loyalist to the shogunate, leading to Naoyuki's death and Nagakira's forces severely defeating the Toyotomi troops. Then, in the Battle of Domyoji on June 2nd, Hideyori's general, Goto Mototsugu, was shot by some stray bullets and then committed seppuku amidst the raging war. With the loss of these key commanders, Hideyori's forces were substantially weakened. So, alongside his other general, Sonata Nobushige, Hideyori retreated to Osaka Castle, where they were met with Yasu's advancing forces. Because as Hideyori arrived too late to organize the castle's defenses, Iyasu's forces set the castle on fire. With no way out, Yorodono and Hideyori made the decision to commit seppuku amidst the flames of the burning Osaka castle, thus ending the Toyotomi lineage. Now, in history, there's been ongoing speculation about whether Yorodono and her son actually perished on the night of the second attack on Osaka castle because there were no witnesses to confirm their deaths and Yorodono's body was never actually found. So, this has led to many theories suggesting that she and her son may have managed to escape the attack, fled, and survived, living out their lives out of sight of Yasu. Some say she fled to Utsunomiya in Ueno province, while others believe she sought refuge within the Shimatsu clan in Satsuma province. However, due to the lack of records or concrete evidence about her whereabouts after the siege and the existence of various theories about their potential escape route, this remains a topic of speculation with no definitive conclusion. Lady Ochiba's Relevance with Lady Yorodono In Shogun, Lady Ochiba appears to be heading into significant trouble if the show were to follow Yorodono's challenges. Nonetheless, Ochiba seems to exude the same amount of confidence and loyalty towards her son. Like Yorodono, she's determined to ensure he fulfills his legacy as the Taiko. However, her history with Mariko is simply a streak added for the purpose of a juicier plot because I don't think Yorodono even met Hosokawa Gracia, the real-life inspiration behind Mariko's character. Plus, 
Gracia died because of Ishida Mitsunari before the Battle of Sekigahara, which eventually led to his defeat. But in no way was Yododono actively involved in that battle or Gracia's life. So the little tweak Shogun added on Mariko and Lady Ochiba growing up together as children and sharing a deep bond until the former was married off was simply fictitious. I mean, yes, like I've mentioned before, Mariko's father did kill Ochiba's father in the show, but the real life equivalent of this was not at all the same. Because Gracia's father actually killed Oda Nobunaga, who was Yododono's uncle and the reason behind behind Yododono's father, Azai Nagamasa's death. Now that I say this out loud, it makes sense why they altered the family dynamics given how complex the real life one sounds. Anyways, there were also rumors that before the enmity, Yododono and Iyasu had something going on between them. Apparently, Yododono had two sisters who were married within the Tokugawa clan, playing crucial roles in fostering diplomatic relations between the two powerful clans, and during Toyotomi Hideyoshi's reign as the Taiko, rumors circulated suggesting Yododono might have had a hand in Hideyoshi's death. This speculation stemmed from her vocal support for Iyasu and efforts to elevate him within the ranks, leading some to view her as a potentially wicked figure. In contrast, Shogun's Lady Ochiba's stance against Toronaga is evident throughout the show, though there have been subtle hints of a deeper history between them because in the second episode, the Taiko once mentioned a potential marriage union between Ochiba and Toronaga after his death, indicating a past connection between them. Plus, the Taiko's widow even encouraged their marriage to unify the clans, although this never came to fruition for valid reasons. Yododono's rife with Toranaga began only after the Hokoji Bell incident. Before that, they shared an understanding, even if it was forced. But again, this woman's life is full of speculation and controversy. Some historians have even said that Toyotomi Hideyoshi was infertile and shooting blanks for years. And Lady Ochiba actually had a secret relationship with Ishida Mitsunari, which is why Ishida rebelled against Tokugawa Iyasu when Hideyori's future was in danger. So, no matter what history dictates, all historians seem to believe that even if it was Ishida and the other council members making the decisions, Yododono was actually the one pulling their strings. Whatever the case, Lady Ochiba and Lady Yododono surely have one thing in common. Both would do just about anything to make sure their son rules Japan as its next Taiko. As of now, the tension in Shogun is palpable, with Ochiba's emerging leadership under Ishido's influence. It remains to be seen if her fate will mirror Yododono's, or if Lady Ochiba will write her own fate in the upcoming episodes. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.